Okay, so I think we're going to be we're going to be starting. Uh, so I'm sharing my screen. So the meeting is recorded. So you do not have to share your video if you do not want to. And this is a one hour long Ask Me Anything session about Asana. So this is me, obviously. Um, this is where I live. I live in France, in the mountains. And just a few words about me. I'm a certified pro. You have my email there. You can use that email to email me any question you have. Um, some people like soccer, some people like gardening. In my case, my hobby is actually Asana. I spend a lot of time on Asana and actually became uh, my job, which is awesome. Uh, I started using Asana 10 years ago. I never stopped. I created tools. I wrote books. I'm going to show you a couple of things I did. And I started consulting, I think, one or two years ago. Uh, so I'm a certified pro. I helped almost a hundred clients around the world, mostly in the US. I've answered a thousand questions, more than a thousand questions on the forum. So I helped a lot of people on the forum. I wrote four books and I created many tools around Asana and I created uh, many services. And you might know me from Templana, which is the, uh, the biggest uh, project I have at the moment. Hi, Anne. Um, so some, um, some cool books I've written. The first one was actually called Become an Asana Superhero. The second one was about working as a team in Asana. And the third one is actually coming uh, in a couple of days. I've written this one with Julian, uh, is, is there with us. And it's about the Asana adoption. It's called Don't Rely on Luck. Uh, it will, it's, it's meant to help you increase the adoption of the tool within the organization. And I also created many tools and services around Asana. You can go to my website, minimalistwork.com. Uh, the page is not very sexy at the moment, but the tools are quite useful, I think. And we actually use them ourselves with Julian when we work with clients. Okay, so let's start. A couple of rules, actually I have three rules. Um, please stay on mute unless you are invited to talk because we love dogs and doorbells, but we don't want to hear them. You might hear some stuff uh, from the background in my case, but I can't really mute myself. Uh, Julian will be moderating the chat. Uh, he will be uh, looking after the question and he will write down the question in the shared project we have. So you don't see it on the screen, but we have a shared project in the sun and he's gonna be uh, writing uh, the question and he will be choosing the order of the question. If your question is not answered, I might get back to you after that uh, tomorrow or maybe next week to answer your question directly by email. So make sure to leave your email in the chat. And you can send any request or follow-up question to my email, uh, S-I-E-B-M-A-N-B at gmail.com. And you can also go to my website uh, to um, contact me directly from there. And I've got some credits from Asana, some Asana dollars to buy, actually a gift to the best question. Uh, so I'll choose the best question or the best attendee uh, to, and reward them with a gift. Uh, they, will be able to, they will be able to choose the gift. And don't forget, not forget, don't forget to leave your email with your question so I can get back to you with the gift if you uh, win the prize. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen, which is a demo account of Asana. This is a business account. So we might look at some features you do not have access to, but you can actually ask questions about business feature if you want to go uh, onto the business business plan of Asana, because I do have access to the business features. Okay, so let's go. Uh, so first question from Julian. My team recently switched from Asana to ClickUp, saying ClickUp does not have more features and is, does have more features and is less expensive. expensive. How do I convince them they're kind of wrong? Um, it's a tough question because I don't know ClickUp. Uh, what I know about Asana is that it's very generic. It's not tailored for a specific industry. It's very generic. It's just made of what I call building blocks. You have project, you have task, you have subtask, you have comments, and you just organize those blocks any way you can. And in Asana, anything can be done in a dozen different ways. So it's very flexible and it's very powerful if you learn to use it. The other argument would be that Asana is really um, on the rise, it's becoming one of the biggest tools out there and they really have more and more integration with other tools outside of Asana and maybe ClickUp does not have as many connection to other tools uh, as Asana. 
So really, I think Asana is really a train you want to hop on right now. But again, ClickUp might be a, a good choice. I really chose to focus on Asana specifically. So I can't help you decide between two tools, but I can tell you that you can do most of the things you need to do in Asana. And I think Asana is most of the time a great choice. Julian, do you want to elaborate? Can you unmute? Do you want to elaborate on your question? Uh, yeah, Bastian, thanks. Um, I think one of the main um, disadvantages or, or, or pain points for my team is Asana is just the price. Like most of the time I heard like it's too expensive. It costs too much, specifically when you have like the uh, pro premium or business uh, uh, features. And uh, I know Asana is one of the best tool. I've been using Asana for years. I love it. Uh, but it's hard for me to convince people that that's the perfect tool for people to be here. So, yeah, one of, one of the way um, around the pricing. At first, you might not need business. You might be good with premium at first. And there's also a way where you can have divisions. So you can have some teams on business, some teams on premium, and some teams on the free plan. Uh, so in your case, it might be applicable. It might be a bit hard to use, but it might be a way to decrease the price of the tool. But if it saves time and saves energy, it's usually worth the price, but it's hard when you look at the invoice and, then, and it's like twice the price of, a, of ClickUp. Okay, so let's look at the second question. So my computer decided to freeze, obviously. <laughs> Okay, how can I have, it's from Geneviève, how can I have subtasks with allotted hours show up in the workload without having them pop up in my main task list? So as you can, as you probably know, the subtasks do not count in the workload. They do not show up in the timeline. They do not show up in the calendar. It's by design. I'm not sure it's going to change. Um, so it's like this. So because the subtask is not part of the project, technically, the subtask do not count in workload. The only way to have the subtask count in workload is to have the subtask be part of the project itself. And to do this, there's actually a way I'm going to create a project to show you. So this is a project. This is a task. This is another task. And usually you have something like this, subtask one. And what you could do is have a section called subtask like this. And if you go back to the task, if you open the subtask, you can actually add that task into the project itself. So it means the subtask is a subtask, but it's also a task within the project. And once you do that, you can move the subtask into a specific section that you can hide away at the bottom. You can actually close that when you work. That way, the subtask is part of the project and actually counts in workload. It shows up in the timeline and it shows up in calendar. There's, there's a couple of problems with that. It's a, it's a bit of a brain freeze to have a subtask be also a task at the same time. The other problem is you need to remember to add the subtask within the project. And one way around that problem is to actually use the search. So I'm going to show you an example. If I create another subtask, as an Sun admin, you could have, you could, you could run a search like this one, looking for task within the project, a project that I'm not sure that works. I hope that works. Um, you go to more, you go to subtask, subtask only. That search gives you all the subtasks within that project, even if the subtask is not part of the project itself. So by running that search on the screen, you quickly see that one subtask has been added to the project, but one hasn't, hasn't been added to the project. So if you run that search, you can actually save that search. You can save the report. You can call that subtask forgotten. And you can see this one has been forgotten. So you can actually manually add that to the project. So it's a way of remembering, finding out which subtasks haven't been added to the project and which one don't count in the workload. 
but it's a workaround. And my biggest advice would be do not use the subtask too much. Try to promote the subtask as a task whenever you can because the subtasks are quite hidden and you hide away a lot of things and you have the limitation of the subtask not being part of the, of the project and then not being in workload and in timeline. Thank you. Thank you so much for that workaround. Um, we're dealing with projects with different sizes and one of them is quite big because it has many partners, mm -hmm. many sites. So, um, and the, the reason that we wanted to do subtask is because you have one task, you know, like write a report or implement a training that has okay. so many different components that my concern was that if you elevate everything to the task level, project managers have to like scroll down through hundreds and hundreds of yep. tasks. And I was initially looking at the subtask as a way to clustering um, some of these related subtasks that would lead to, um, uh, to a deliverable. Um, but I think that my two takeaways, uh, and thank you for that, is to try to elevate them to the task as much as possible. And two is tie them to a project, but then kind of like hide them under but a actually, I, I actually have another workaround for you, especially because you want to use the workload feature. Uh, so what yes. you can do is you can forget about um, that workaround. What you can do is you could have another project called subtask of a project. This could be only accessible to the managers, for example. And what you could do is you could use the search you search for task within a project, you search for subtask only. And you can do even better than that. You can do subtasks that are not inside the subtask project. So at the moment I have two, I'm gonna save this one. So subtask not in subtask project. You can multi-select the subtask. You can add them to the other project, hide them away in another project. And what's good is if you create a portfolio called a portfolio, portfolio, <laughs> sorry, portfolio, you could add those two projects within the portfolio. So the existing one and the one that holds all the subtask. And that way, anything you have would count inside the workload feature, but it won't take up some space within the project, a project. It's gonna be invisible from people working there. But as an admin, you can come in every day, you can run the report like this. It's empty because I do not have any new subtask. But if you have people working, you have subtask number three. Then if you open the report, I think it takes a few seconds to appear, but you will have the new subtask here. You can manually add that to the project. And if you do that regularly, those subtasks will count uh, inside the workload. Does that help? Is that better than the Absolutely. other Absolutely. And when the staff that is linked to that task, if they go to the actual project and go to the subtask and they click that it's done, would it also disappear from the other new project? Yeah, always, always. Uh, it's, it's the same task. It's called, uh, called multi-homing. A task can be part of different projects at the same time. And in that case, it's a special case of multi-homing because it's a subtask and it's also in another project, but it's the same task, the exact same object. So if you complete okay. that, it completes elsewhere. Okay, great. Thank you. No problem. Uh, okay, so next question from Annie. I'm overwhelmed by all the tasks I have in my task. What's the best way to manage them in a way that isn't so overwhelming? So it's very important to understand how my tasks work. I'm going to show you different tricks. The first one is task auto promotion. I'm writing them so I don't forget. The other one is what I call parking project. And the third one is tip of the iceberg. The task auto promotion is the fact that a task will move from later to upcoming and from upcoming to today based on the due date. So for example, you have, if I have a task due in January, January um, 20. 
I'm going to put a due date, January the 20th. If I move that task into later, so you can either drag and drop, or you can use the button here, or you can use the keyboard shortcut. So I'm hiding away the task. It's, it is due for later. So it's OK if I hide away, and it's going to come back to me uh, later. It's going to come back to me actu actually seven days before the due date. It's going to come back up into upcoming. So I just need to find the task again. Where is it? There. So seven days before the due date, it's going to move automatically up into upcoming. So on the 30th. And on the 20th, it's going to come back into today. So anything that is due in the future can actually be hidden away inside later. And it's going to come back to you whenever you need to work on that task. What I do in my case is when it comes back into upcoming seven days before the due date, I actually push it again inside later. And then it's going to come back directly from later to today on the due date. So that's the first thing to clean my task view is actually to hide away anything that is due later. The second project, the second uh, method is called parking project. It's something I use all the time. I have a lot of things that are not that important. For example, I have a list of leads I need to contact. So I have leads. I have lead number one, lead number two, lead number three. They are not assigned to me because if you assign them to you, you will have a heavy load of tasks. So what I do is I have a task inside my task that is called regular check-in. And inside that task, I have reference to different projects that are parking project, project in which I park task. So in that case, that would be leads. So whenever I have time, when I'm done with all my lists, the regular check-in is the last task at the bottom of upcoming. So whenever I'm done and I cleaned everything else, I end up on that task and I go, OK, I'm going to go through the parking project because I have time. So I'm going to go through my leads and then my clients and then the content I need to write and all of these things that are not that important, but still important enough to be in Asana, but I don't assign them to me. The other um, technique, uh, I call that the tip of the iceberg. So for example, if you have a project, it's a very big project. And that project has step one, step two, step three. What I do is I assign myself on the first task only. So inside my task, I have only the tip of the iceberg because it doesn't make any sense to be assigned right now to the second step because I can't do the second step before I do the first step. So what I do is I just assign myself on step one. And when I've done step one, I actually need to remember that it was the tip of the iceberg and I need to go and fetch uh, the next steps. But it's, it could work in some cases. That technique could work in some cases. So, Anye, does that answer your question? Does that help? Don't have to talk if you don't want to. Yes, that helps. Thank you. Um, uh, the other question I had was related to, to calendaring and I use a Google calendar and um, I sort of I played around with the trial version of Sansama, which um, allows you to kind of identify how much time. So that's another question I had around time blocks. If you want to like estimate how much time you have in the day to do all of the things that are on your list and how much time it's going to take to do everything. Um, I, so I've been playing around with Sansama. It seems like Asana should be able to do that, you know, internally as well, but I haven't been able to figure out how to do that. And then related to the Google Calendar, um, like if there are ways of putting the tasks in a, in, you know, visually in your calendar so you can kind of see what the time chunks you have are available to work on things. Okay. Um, for the Google Calendar, uh, if you go on the forum, there's a discussion about if you look for sync Google Calendar. Um, there's a discussion real time two way calendar integration. You have 308 messages to read, <laughs> but the solution is there. There are actually two tools to have 
a sync between Asana and Google Calendar. So you might want to check that out. So your task actually uh, show up in Google Calendar. If so I've done, I've done it in a way, uh, I, I get, may, I'm not sure exactly which way I did it, but um, so the tasks show up at the top of the day as like a daily task in the Google Calendar. Yeah, it's one, one of the, yeah, it's, it's one of the issue because the due, the due time is not used by Google yeah. Calendar. It's not communicated from Asana to Google. And I think the tools mentioned here are taking those time into account. So that would be the solution for you. And also, Thank you. sorry. And also, uh, when you talked about planning your day, I've seen people do stuff like this. They create a section directly inside today, for example, morning, afternoon, and they place the task inside uh, those sections. Also, Asana is um, releasing a new version of my task that my task will become a regular project in which you'll be able to have custom field. So you might be able to have a custom field with the time needed to complete the task. And that could help you if you, because if you have a custom field, um, if I show you in a project, if you add a custom field called time, which is a number field, if you have like 12 minutes, 20 minutes, 35 minutes, you get the sum uh, displayed. And if you create a section, you also get the sum within the section. So if you use that to write down the number of minutes, you'll be able to know if your day is full or not within uh, Asana directly within the My Task view. Oh, that's great. Thank you. So it's coming in a few in a few weeks. It was announced on, on the forum. And also what I do in my case is whenever I have a meeting, for example, I use a calendar emoji like this and I have my meeting and I usually have a due time, for example, today. And I organize the meeting chronologically as they happen like this. That can also help you organize your day. Okay, so, so Ilya, what is the most unexpected use case or workflow you've seen that people implemented in Asana? Um, <laughs> It's a trick question. You might get you might get the gift from the the hardest question. Um, I've seen I've seen stuff. Yeah, you might have realized by default. I think Asana changed that, but by default, Asana before was showing only incomplete tasks. So I've had a client say to everyone at the company, "Do not complete task because if you do, they disappear. So do not complete the task." Because whenever they completed something, it disappeared from the screen and the, the, the boss actually actually freaked out. So he said to everyone, do not complete the task. And I've also seen people implement workflows with like a blog post workflow with like five different approvals from five different people with the possibility to have some of them were happening at the same time, but some others need to happen first and some others need to happen um, at uh, the last stage and there could be some back and forth between people so we try to communicate that using custom fields and uh, different stages and um, ultimately I think we uh, went down from five different approvals to only one or two so that's the yeah the craziest uh, workflow I've seen So question from Julian, can I use Asana as a content library tool? If so, any good practices or advice to share? Um, so yeah, definitely you can have, uh, it's what uh, the other Julian called uh, the Pense Pas Bête. It's actually, it's a board. So I'm gonna create the board to show you. It's a blank project. Um, and it's a board and for example, you can have something called passwords, you can have something around, I think he had something around the car rental. For example, he had um, address to book, blah, blah, blah. I think he had something like list of car models. And then in password, you have like the Google Drive password etc etc so any project can actually be turned into a wiki database of information 
Um, you can leave it like this. You can also change the settings by having uh, only other people as a comment uh, permission. So only people can comment and only you can actually add new items to the list. What also works great is um, what I've what I've shown. I'm going to show you uh, there. If you go to project or word, I, I ran a little contest about the coolest project uh, about Asana and Julian's project won. It's a project about who organizes uh, meetings every week and is using a little trick, which is the task at the top of the board. They have an attachment, an image attachment, and it uses an attachment that uh, illustrates the entire column. So, for example, in Asana, they do that. So they create those fancy uh, header for the columns with the title and a nice color background. And when you have an attachment on a task, for example, if I'm taking if I'm taking a screenshot, I'm going to show you. Sorry, it's loading. So if you have a task like this and you attach two different screenshots, the board view will display an image. Might be the last one or the first one, I'm not sure. But if you use the three dots menu, you can actually choose the cover image. So you can have the most recent, no image at all, or you can choose a completely different one that allows you to create a nice wiki that is not just a list of tasks on top of each other. Does that help, Julian? Are you going to do this? Yeah, very, very helpful. Thank you very much, Bastien. No problem. Um, OK, so Ilya, how do you work with tags? Is Taxana still works? So Taxana is a tool I created a while back. So if you go to my website, minimalistwork.com, if you go to the tools, the tool, is, the tool is there, tags. It's the only way to have a list of tags within Asana. Because in Asana, you do not have a list of tags. It doesn't exist. You only get tags if you type a new tag and it auto-completes to existing tag. You do not have a list. So I have a tool if you want the list of tags, but I do not use tags myself, like never. I usually use custom field whenever I need to. But sometimes they might be interested, interesting if you just want to have something like urgent, for example, or these kind of tags. The cool thing is you can click on a tag and that takes you to the list of tasks that have that tag. So for example, I have a couple of things with the urgent uh, tag. That might be interesting. I, have, I haven't seen a lot of people use the tags uh, successfully, but the tool still works. Okay, so Guillaume, when I have a document and I expect comments from three people, either I create a task with the three people, but it doesn't appear to be a task for them. Or I create a task and three subtasks with the name of each. So you have a document and you expect comments. Okay, so a couple of possibilities. The first one, you could create a task. Uh, for example, you go to my task and the task will be called review document. You describe what you expect, you put a link uh, to the document. What you can do is you can actually assign that task to several people. Actually, you don't assign to several people, you assign duplicates of the task to different people, you assign copies. So I could do this, I could assign this to Bob, Alice, and that's it. I can assign to two different people and that will assign two duplicates. I will be a collaborator on all of those tasks. So I will be notified of any comment they make. So it's the first possibility. It's a good possibility, especially if you do not want each people to see the comments of the other. If you do not want them to be bothered by the comments and you want them to be really free about what they say without being influenced. The, the problem is you get comments from different tasks. So you have to consolidate the comments. So if I, uh, if I open, if I run the search, you'll see that the task exists in three different uh, occurrences. There's mine I created and there's the two ones I assigned and I'm a collaborator on those. 
the other the other solution would be uh, to create review document and and uh, indeed have people as a subtask uh, then you need to define what's the name of the of the subtask maybe the task is called document and the subtask is called review and you assign those to Alice and Bob that could be a possibility uh, you can also tell them to give their feedback inside the main task if you want to. And you can also ask people to review. Can you review that doc? And you can say, uh, for example, create a task for yourself if you need to. You can do something like this. So people, they can create themselves a task if they need to. Uh, it's really up to them. So it might be a way to do this. Does that answer your question, Gim? Yes, yeah, thank you, Bastian. No problem. Um, can you show us some of your favorite project setups? Um, actually, no, because I did not prepare that question, and all the all my favorite projects include um, confidential information from clients, and uh, I've seen good projects from clients on their an icon, but I can't share that here because it's recorded, and I'm going to share the video um, online. But we can get on a call and another time I can show you a couple of stuff that is private that I can't share to everyone. I do have, I, I do like the one from Julian, this one that uses the image at the top of the, at the top of the, of the screen. Uh, I know that Julian recreated a bunch of great projects in the sauna, but uh, uh, maybe Julian, if you have time, if, you, if your network allows it, maybe you can share your screen and show us a couple of projects. Maybe we can do that at the end. He has some uh, network problem. Yes, there. hi everyone. Uh, yes, I, I can try. In so which which try issues with my network, but I, I can try uh, sharing we, some. Uh, we some try at the end, if that's okay. Yeah, okay. I prepare okay. Uh, I prepare the screen because uh, there was a good uh, Asana account was not open, so I prepared okay. everything for the end of, of the of the meeting. Thanks. Um, so the other Julian is asking, what's your favorite Asana feature? So my favorite is the task auto promotion. So it's the fact that the task you can actually, I call that the boomerang. You can launch, you can hide the task into later and it's gonna come back to you uh, when the due date is up. So it's my favorite one because I'm hiding a lot of stuff away and every day I just get reminded of stuff uh, that needs to happen that day. So it's my favorite one. And I also love a custom field. I'm using custom field a lot. I can actually share one of my projects, uh, actually. Um, let me share my screen. This is the one I use the most. This is my content factory. You can see everyone <laughs> looking at the screen. It's the content factory. So I'm trying to publish content every day on LinkedIn. So I have a bunch of posts that are scheduled. So that's the schedule section assigned to me with a due date. So everything at the moment is inside later and tomorrow I will get this one come back to me inside my task. For each task, I have a status scheduled, ready to be scheduled, my next big piece, next small pieces, the backlog and things that are on hold. I have a type of post. Is that a post? Is that a quote? Is that a video? Uh, is that a comic image? And I have my different channels, LinkedIn, website, newsletter, community. So for example, tomorrow I have a post about how to save the Zoom inside a timeline without having the timeline be the default view. I've already shared that in my newsletter. It's published. I do not wish to put that on my website, but I will share that on LinkedIn tomorrow. And I need to share that in the community. And what I created is I actually created a report called for community that pulls up all the tasks, all the content I've created that have the value to add inside the community field. So I'm posting every day on LinkedIn, but I also posting every day on the community, but I do not post the same things. So for LinkedIn, I use my content factory, but for the community, I come here, I look at the list and I choose the topic I want to share inside the community. And it's the same thing when I have some free time to work on the website. I have exactly the same report for the website channel. 
this is all the stuff I haven't placed on the website yet, but that I need to. And I have the same thing for the newsletter. Whenever, <clears throat> sorry, whenever I send a newsletter out, I have a list of all the topics I haven't shared yet. So I can cherry pick the things I want to place in my newsletter. That's an example of a of project I can show you. So actually I'm using a uh, custom field uh, pretty heavily. So I'm gonna share my task again. So to answer the question, task, auto promotion and custom field. And I also like to use multi-homing. So the fact that a task is part of several projects at the same time, I can actually recreate an example here. I have my setup for clients is like this. I have a setup. So let's say I'm working with Nike, uh, SpaceX and Tesla. They are my client. And Tesla, they also have a project dedicated to them. So that's the Tesla project. And the task, the Tesla task is also part of the Tesla project that way. And inside the Tesla project, I have different sections. I have sections about the session we did together. I have a section about the billing. I have a section about the topics to discuss next time, et cetera, et cetera. And for the billing, for example, so I'm using emojis quite a lot. Uh, I have invoice number one. And in my setup, I also have a project called invoices with a custom field of different statuses. And that invoice is also part of the invoice project. And when I add the invoice to the invoice project, it's gonna bring up all the custom fields related to invoicing, the amount, the payment status, uh, all this kind of, uh, of information. So that client project has different types of tasks. It has session tasks, it has billing tasks, and it has the actual client task. So I'm using multi-homing quite a lot to achieve uh, such an organization. I'm gonna go back to the list of question. So Guillaume is saying we have the premium version. Is it possible uh, to use the custom field to cal calculate the workload easily? Do you have to export each time, use Zapier, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera? Um, it's a good question. Um, what you can do is you can have a custom field called time. It's a number. You need to add the custom field to the library. It's important because I'm going to use the search to that. So you add the field to the library. If you do not do that, you won't be able to find the field. So you do it like this. Uh, that. It's actually uh, in hours, let's say it's so one hour, two hour, three hours. And this one is assigned to me. This one is assigned to Bob. And what you could do is use a search, advanced search assigned to Bob. And you can add a custom field to the search. In that case, it's the time field. You do not care about the value. You just put the field in the search so that the field shows up in the list. It's a little trick. You don't put, do not put any value, but just by placing the field, it will show up uh, automatically. So that's all the tasks assigned to Bob. And then you have the time column. And if you multi-select, that gives you the sum at the bottom the sum of all the hours spent by Bob on those tasks. You can improve the report by only looking at completed tasks. For example, you can also filter based on uh, time. For example, completion date between two dates. So each month you can run a report to have the time worked by each person within the company. And as an admin, you might also be able to export the entire account and you will probably have that information within the export as well. So you might be able to run some, uh, some computation on that. Does it help you? Um, yes, I think I have to test it uh, because it's what I would like to see it's every month is if people are overloaded or not. 
So I understand I have to create a report for each people. And each uh, one... I forget, was just an example to filter by people, but you could decide not to filter on anything, but you could have a, you could filter on the due date. Um, sorry, due date is here. Due date between December 1st and December 31, 31st. You could do that to see all the tasks. And then if you sort by assignee, you'll have an idea of the workload of people. You will see both the number of tasks and the value of the time custom field. That will allow you to see if someone is overloaded. It's a way around the, the workload feature. Okay, sounds good. So um, you, you record this uh, because I haven't not everything. I'm not sure to be able to do it by myself. I record. Yeah, yeah, you, you get the recording. Watch it again to be sure. Thank you. No, no problem. Um, so Anne is saying, do you use rules to automatically add tasks to the relevant project based on the custom field value or do you add them manually? Um, the thing is, I do not have a business account personally. I just have a demo account. So I do have a premium account and in premium, the rules are really limited and you can't do much. So I decided not to use rules at all within my premium account, but I will soon have a bigger account and I'll be able to use the rules. So I will definitely use the rules to, to do things. For example, um, I'd like to improve my content factory project by using um, rules. So that's definitely a, an interesting uh, feature. Do you have a business account, Anne? No. It's a bit expensive to buy just for yourself a business account, especially because you need to have two licenses, I think. Yeah, true. I've just been playing around with it in the demo space, but I yeah. really love it. I would love to be able to add more rules to my premium projects. Well, you can actually have a look at uh, Flozana. I'm just going to write down so everyone can see Flozana. It was created by Phil. He's a very active member of the community, and he actually created Flozana long before the rules were introduced. And it's uh, it's like rules, but on steroids, so you can do even more stuff with, uh, with Flozana that you can do with the balls. Uh, I'm not sure about the pricing though, compared to Asana, but I think it would be more affordable than having a business account in Asana. Uh, so Geneviève is asking, if you have monthly recurring meetings and you add recurrence to the due date, how do you get this meeting reflected on the calendar and the workload? Uh, it's a great question. Um, if you, because you notice that if you have a meeting like this weekly meeting. And if you create a recurrence every Wednesday, you actually already realized that there's only one instance of that task. So you only have one instance in the calendar. So I created a tool for this because it's a big problem. So if you go to my website, if you go to the tools, I created a new tool called recurring task that tool will allow you to create all those tasks in advance. So they will all show up inside your calendar because they will actually exist. So you could have a task every Monday for the entire year created by that tool. So you can have a look. I think it should solve your problem. The way around this, if you have time, is to go there, you go to the menu and you duplicate. And then you do it again and again and again. And it doesn't take that long to create like 50 tasks. It's, it's quite, it took maybe 10 minutes to create all the tasks for the entire year. So we can definitely do that. And I'll show you another trick to create tasks very quickly, uh, to duplicate very quickly uh, a big number of tasks. So you can create a project. I'm gonna call that Sandbox. So it's a bit of a trick. Uh, so task to duplicate. You turn that project into a template. You use the template. So that will create the task for you, task to duplicate. You move that task again into sandbox, the first one. So now you get two, you will have two different tasks. You use the template again, 
send box number three. So you get two tasks that you move into the first one and it's uh, exponential. So now you get four and then you get eight and then 16 and then 32. So very quickly, you can have a big amount of tasks without manually duplicating each one. But I think Geneviève, in your case, the tool I created might be the solution. Okay, thank you. And will that also calculate the hours and show in your workload? If, uh, yeah, if it's assigned to you and you have a due date, it will definitely show up inside the workload. Okay. Um, if you're using work, are you using workload with a special metric or are you using the number of tasks as a metric? Now we're using hours to make sure that, so we can plan the work across um, everybody in the organization uh, quarterly to make, you know, to identify areas of um, overwork for, for people. Okay. Yeah, so my tool only allows you at the moment to choose a title and a description for the task. So you might have, after the creation, you might have to multi-select them to choose the value of the, of the custom field you're using. Okay, great. But still going to save you 10 to, to 20 minutes, depending on how many tasks you want to create. Okay. Okay, Guillaume is asking, I use Asana with my company with an email address and with a customer with a customer email address. Is it possible to have all the project in a single Asana environment or am I condemned to alternate from one account to the other? Uh, there's no way around it. You need to have two different accounts. <laughs> Sorry <laughs> about this one. And if you want to have a look, it can be way worse. <laughs> I don't know if you see I have like 20 different accounts. I need to go between every time. There's no way around it. I think there's an app called Taco. Uh, why Apple? Oh, Taco Asana. I think that app allows you to have your task from different accounts being displayed on the same screen. That might be the way around it. Is that what you want, Guillaume? Um but um, so I saw all the environment you have, but it's with the same email address. Oh yeah, I mean it's. Uh... So my problem is I have two different. Oh okay. Address. So okay. I so can... yeah. Uh, yeah yeah sure. So in your case, it's different. You go to profile settings, then you go to email forwarding. And then you can add a new email there. In my case, those two emails were merged into one account. So I, I can, you still have to, if you have two different um, Asana environments, you will still have to toggle between the two, but you'll be able to use the toggle rather than being logged in into different uh, Chrome uh, page. Yeah. That way you can merge the accounts together. And you can also do private stuff inside the company workspace using a private project, private team, or this kind of that's, thing. Yeah, that's, that's great. <laughs> that's a very good point. Uh, but in my task, it's just the my task of the environment you are, not my task of other environments. Yeah, so if you want my task for multiple accounts, then you need to use the Taco app. I was just uh, Googling. <laughs> Okay. Taiko, it's called Taiko, and I think it's a consolidated uh, MyTask view for different uh, accounts. Okay, we'll test it. I, ne I never used it, I just know that it works to merge accounts together. Uh, so Julian is saying, when I add a PDF into a project, I'm not able to select text within the PDF when I open preview it from Asana. Uh, yeah, I think you're not missing anything. The preview is just uh, doesn't have the... Um, ability to select text, uh, you would have to open that outside of Asana. I think there's no way around it. You can, uh, I encourage you to create a, a thread in the, in the, um, in the um, forum to ask for that specific feature. I haven't seen that request. Uh, I think the people are complaining sometimes about the preview because you can't zoom in, zoom out or select text or whatever. Uh, so I think there's no way around it. Uh, so Geneviève is asking if there are best practices on the amount of weekly time Slack 
to give every staff to avoid overwork. Can you rephrase the question? Um, sure. Um, so in my, I come from a nonprofit um, and in our organization, like every hour that you work is attached to a particular project. So in Asana, we have like every single task for the projects have your, have your hours. But sometimes what we have noticed is that even if you have your 35 or your 40 hours that you're going to be working on a week, it's linked to a particular project. But there are other things that are unexpected that come up. And sometimes I've heard that people leave, you know, oh, 20% of your time should not be identified to a project just for those random things that come up, maybe like a, a meeting, an unexpected, you know, funding opportunity or thing that you have to write. Um, and if you add those unexpected items on top of your workload, now that means that your staff is working more than the hours than they should. Um, and I've heard um, that sometimes you leave like 20% or maybe 10%. So I was wondering if you have any best practices to do that. And the second part of that question, I know that in the workload view, so as a nonprofit, we were able to get the discount for business, which has been really nice. Um, and in the portfolio view for the workload, you can have for every staff member, you can put it at kind of like the amount, the maximum amount of hours a week, yep. you're able to work, right? Um, so should I be putting kind of like the maximum or should I put, you know, 80% or 90% of the of their time to make sure that to leave a little bit of slack for the unidentified tasks that come up? Yeah, I guess you can either have 80% as the limit in workload, but I think you can also maybe create in advance some placeholder task that has that amount attached to it, uh, just so it takes up the space in workload without, uh, takes up the space in workload. Uh, I can't elaborate more. I, I have, I don't know what to say. That's okay. Thank you. Okay, cool. Um, okay, so the last one, and then I'll give the mic to Julian. Um, so the other Julian is asking if I have a template of task or a project I want to duplicate 50 times, do I have to do it manually? Is there a feature that allows a sign to duplicate it a certain number of times? So you want to create like 20 different projects based on the template? Is that it? Um, Asana does not have this. I think I think Zapier allows you to create a project based on the template. So if you choose the trigger in Zapier, trigger can be a task is added in the project, for example. So the trigger in Zapier is I'm going to write that down. Sorry. Uh, so. Trigger, oh, sorry, trigger in Zapier, task added to project, action, create project based on template. If you set something up like this, you could actually hook the trigger to a project like this one, and you could create task manually like this, and that will actually trigger Zapier. And if if I had the Zap running, I would actually now have 10 times the project. It's a little hack. You need to find, you need, first you need to make sure that Zapier does is able to create project based on a template. I think it does. And if it does, just find a random trigger that you can trigger yourself 50 times easily. I create a task, or you can also use a webhook uh, I can email you that afterwards if you want. And webhook is just visiting some specific address. If you refresh your page 50 times, that will trigger Zapier 50 times and you'd get 50 projects created from the template. It's a little hacky, but it works. Okay, um, Julian, are you ready to, to show us a couple of projects? Yes. Okay, share I'll stop sharing. I'm going to allow you to share. Here you go. Just to complete your last answer, uh, another uh, uh, tips maybe is uh, to use the CSV file for Julian. 
exactly to, uh, yeah. to duplicate tasks task. so if you use excel you duplicate uh, very quickly uh, the task uh, inside excel then you upload this csv file inside asana um yeah. just before yeah just just before you share your screen everyone make sure to leave your email because i think i'm not sure i have access to your email inside the asana events uh, portal so if you want to get the gifts for the best question, you need to leave your email uh, next you, to your- You will have the email, Bastian. Okay. Okay, all right. Francesca will be able to provide you with the email. Okay. Great. Are you able to share your screen? Yes. Okay, great. Can you see it? Yes. Um, so, so, so first, sorry for non-French speakers. Uh, you, you will see uh, many, many uh, French uh, French words because I usually support French customers, but uh, I can provide you with some examples. examples. So the first project is uh, the Ponce Pabet uh, Bastien talked about, uh, just to show you with many, many uh, tasks and, uh, and uh, images, uh, you can create a kind of wiki and with my team, we created, uh, for example, a first column for, for all the different tools we use uh, to book uh, hostels, to book uh, cars, uh, to, uh, to um, set up our holidays, et cetera, et cetera. And once you click on a, on a task, you get all the information needed to book, uh, for instance, for this one, it's to book a car. We uh, never uh, remember uh, which type of car we are able to to book uh, where what is the link, uh, what is uh, the login format to uh, to be able to, to book the car. So we provide all the information, the description of the task, and we've did so uh, with uh, many other other things for holidays, for hotels, etc. Um, we also created tasks to uh, remember where we store all the videos to uh, promote our company. Uh, same for PDF files, and uh, then you, you can customize with all the different uh, files and things or sub websites uh, that your, your team would, uh, would uh, need access to uh, very frequently. So this is the first example. Um, we, we're running out of time. I, I think we're going to take five more minutes to go through the project you, you have, okay? Okay. Um, second one is the one, uh, the project which won uh, the, the award. So uh, I use this project to manage my team and uh, columns corresponds to a week, week four, week three, week two. And each week, uh, the responsible of the, the meeting changes. So uh, it provides us with a, a very efficient meeting because, uh, because it changed every time. And we provide all the uh, topics we want to talk about by creating new tasks. And what we, we see is that uh, if everybody provide uh, new tasks uh, in Asana during the week, many, many tasks are uh, resolved for our question. questions are solved uh, without uh, well, just before the, the, the meeting. And once we uh, all gather during the meeting, we just have uh, the last few questions, uh, which were too difficult to solve uh, just by uh, typing a comment in Asana. Um, with my team, every week we uh, use a week priorities uh, project. Uh, we have set, it, set up in, uh, with uh, the timeline view, timeline view, sorry, and uh, we we gather in uh, the this week section all the different uh, tasks we we have due uh, this week, and then we uh, just by giving a glance to this project, you you can see uh, which are the uh, most important uh, task we have uh, uh, to follow during the week because we don't put everything, we put uh, the, the task that uh, must be finished at the end of the week so that everyone can uh, provide help uh, to, uh, to another collaborators during the week if, uh, if you have a uh, free time. Um, another one, so it's, it's not very difficult to implement that kind of uh, of project, uh, we we have created um, a custom field um, with uh, the different steps to uh, to solve uh, an issue when uh, when a customer contacts us. That's why it's called uh, after sales. And uh, what I want to show you is uh, uh, the philosophy behind this project uh, because you you 
if you imagine that we have three steps, one, two, three, and uh, those steps are uh, are being managed by uh, three different people, you could uh, you could imagine that you you should create three different ta tasks. But my advice is to create uh, only one. So you you take a template at uh, at the top, and then the you you make. Uh, but you change the assignee uh, each time the, the, the task has to, uh, to change from step one to step two to step three. So for instance, if uh, Lea has uh, finished was, what she has to do for uh, the client uh, A, then she, she just changed the step. And uh, if you have set up, uh, if you have uh, sorted your project by uh, steps, um, the task automatically goes to step, step two and you can change the, the assignee. If you are in business, you, this could be a automatic uh, uh, too. But the idea behind that is uh, that you should not create three tasks, but uh, keep only one. And doing so, if you click on a client uh, task, you keep all the history uh, in only one task and you don't have to find the context and uh, all the answers uh, between one, two or three tasks. Um, another one, this idea is from Bastian. Uh, once you, once in your, your, in your society, you have uh, created many, many forms, uh, Bastian and I advised you to create uh, in a public team, you create a forms uh, uh, project, sorry, called forms, uh, where you store uh, all the type of forms existing in the company. And if you have added a custom field with the link, uh, you just copy and paste the link here. And uh, uh, once the link is provided, you can directly visit the link by clicking here. So if you create forms for for a, a car rental, for example, you even your internal uh, collaborators from your company you can, can come to this project and click on the link and uh, provide uh, all the information to, uh, to rent the car. I think um, we're going to uh, stop there, if that's okay. okay. We are out of time. Thanks, Julian. Um, can you stop sharing so I can share again? Oh, yes, of course. Okay, so thank you everyone. If you have any more questions, don't hesitate to send uh, by email. You can also find me on LinkedIn and you can go to my website for uh, to see the tools uh, I've created and all the content uh, I've created. And uh, thank you very much. I hope it was useful and have a, have a nice uh, end of day or evening for depending on where you are.